Namaste and welcome to class and thank you so much for sitting with me with your undivided attention. And in today's class we're going to talk about memory, not from the point of view that we use to refer as a memory something that we remember from the past, but the memory related to our subconscious. And there are three different types of memories that when they are deep-seated in our cellular system, it can create a lot of blockages in the flow of our energy and in revealing certain emotions and sensations that we don't know where it comes from. So let's start by saying that memory is very much related to the water element in the body. This is what we the percentage of our body is highly um, formed by water, but not the water that we think is in the ocean or in the rivers. It's that water that has been accumulating and passed on from generation to generation. Memories, information, and how we deal with it, and how we recycle these kind of memories, and how we utilize those resources that serve, after all, as a foundation of life to use all different kinds of information to put together to form the diversity. But in today's class, I want to talk about three different kinds of memories. Number one, is the memory that comes from what we have say to ourselves and we prepare the whole chemistry of the body and we create a mental scenario, an expectation of what I would like to do or what I would like to be or where is the direction that I would like to go. And in that mind decision, when you are not considering the life force as a partner, when you are only applying your will and say, I want to have a house and I want to have uh, these things inside the house, the money and the bank and the, and the relationships and so on. And you, kind of create that expectation in your head without sometimes considering that you need to make some steps of maturity to get the house and that you need to make some efforts as well in the physical form to gain to that goal. Well, all those false promises, all those expectations that comes in form of information that you give to your, from your voice to your mind, from the mind to your emotions, from the emotions to your nervous system, and you don't realize it. You start creating a very deep-rooted, unfinished memory or unfinished, unresolved, potent energy in there. So. It's, it's like having a closet full of projects that you don't finish. But the body is very wise and it wants to release those memories and reminding you from time to time that you need to do that. You discard it. You don't pay attention to it, you forget, you doubt, you denial that. So in here, that accumulations of failing projects, it becomes a sensation of failing something. And it, with that failing something, you are getting angry inside. And I have seen this many times when people are in certain situations in transition and emotions open the door, it comes anger. And it's anger related to nothing. It's just that deep-seated anger 
that comes from your unbroken promises. It comes from the place where you have no proof to yourself that you are capable to sustain your word and to rise to your own expectation, to your own passions. So this is a big accumulation in the soul bodies, in the, in, in the water elements, because it's, it's something that you will pass to somebody else. That energy is transmittable, that memory is transmittable to somebody else. Also, I have witnessed that. If, for example, you have a project that you have not finished, if you want to paint or have chickens or uh, do a new garden or any of that, and you sit in, 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 you know, on a table, on a family or friends or something, somebody out of the blue say, I would like to have a uh, painting, I would like to have chickens. And you say, oh, me too, I had this idea a long time ago. So life is transmitting this information and see who is going to uh, express it, who is going to uh, foresee that fruition, that potentiality of creativity. The second memory it could be collective, but also comes from that denial, from not fulfilling your expectations. Because when you don't fulfill your expectations, you get angry and you enter into the H <laughs> DHD, as I call it, and it's you self-doubt, you self-hate, and you self-denial. So with these three things, it perpetuates the fact that you cannot manifest. You definitely cannot manifest. So the memory is in the way, the way you're dealing with the memory is in the way, and the consequences of dealing with that memory is in the way. So what it happens is that you are not utilizing the resources to create something new to serve the memory as a foundation. That pollutes the water within you. And remember, water is made of the oxygen and the hydrogen, and the oxygen is very much attached to the molecule of prana, the life force, the ones that, that uh, thrive our necessity of living and expressing and creating. So you pollute the water that way, and that of course manifests in the outside um, by not caring. The humanity don't care about the waters. Don't it just dump things on it without any awareness or consciousness that they're really dumping on themselves. The sec the the third memory that we have. Is, is the one that we are trapped in the habits, in the automatic respond, the one that is not with any awareness. We just have the habit of eating a certain time, even if we are not hungry, or sleeping at a certain time, or responding to love, to life, to challenges in a certain way, without any awareness or um, review of how, what other ways it can be possible to handle it, that kind of habit. So it's in here with the automatic self, the memories of just creating the same thing over and over, we lose the freshness and so on. So how to deal with memories? What, what is, what is the, the, the base or the message of the water, the memory, and the relationship to the soul bodies, to the subconscious. And it's one thing, and it's love. Love for life, life in love, and the sense of opening the gratitude for what we have, for what we can create, that we say, wow, we are really, truly 
the creators and co-creators of everything. So memories are really the bounding um, element for the rest of our actions without the information that we are receiving from ancestors and, and from our own soul experiences, we won't be able to grow into a new perspective or um, realize different things. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the best use of memory is gratitude. And how to purify the water is through prayer is through the moon prayers, is through the honoring the cycles, is through honoring the woman cycles, is through having some kind of relationship of gratitude for what we are and for what we are able to do and create that sense of gratitude and great simplicity and great humility. The water is the beginning of everything, it's life. But waters with memories that are stagnant and angry and um, stuck, they're just not working for a well-being of your soul and your earth bodies. Thank you so much for sitting with me in this class and I will see you in the next one. Namaste.